following program may not be suitable for younger listeners. This show does not reflect the views of this channel or its affiliates. Please stand by. Thanks, George. No problem. Is this real the last one for a while? No. Oh, the next week. Oh, I forgot my radio voice. Uh, we'll be on next week, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right, dear friends. George, we'll be back next week, but uh, you better take full advantage of it. All my training right out the window. What would Columbia School of Broadcasting say? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> And I feel good. The subconscious will listen and absorb this message. Exactly. Hey, what's going on here? The Soap Genius. Welcome to the end times, boys and girls. We're gonna shock shock the house, put your brain in the world. Bob is getting down with you here tonight. Bob is getting down to help your plight. Bob is coming here to ease your strife. Come on, suckers, let Bob into your life. Big man, Bob. Oh. Oh, yes, dear friends. Uh, this is KNON 90.9 FM in Dallas, Texas. And you're listening to the Hour of Slack. Tuesdale, reminding you that it's often a photon that light releases, but truth is, not everyone gets the picture. Hoping your time is all time, and all your unpermissible truths are happy truths. Here's your host... Who sits on the right-hand side of Bob? None other than the Reverend Ivan Stang! That's me, the baby. The sexiest man on Earth. Yeah, well, a young uh, Adonis whose uh, ears... We've heard all that a million times. Yes, this is Reverend Ivan Stang, and uh, we do love you, and after a fashion, you might say. I'm trying to control the levels on my headphones. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, you see, friends, in order to know that I'm not dead, I have to turn the headphone levels up all the way so that I can hear my own voice amplified larger than life you might say and I know that you girls and others like that and for good reason no if you only knew if you only knew there we go okay I'm in control I'm in control baby Bob is my load and I'm talking again we had a great Christmas um, the family, you know, believe it or not, it, despite the the uh, the hateful anti Yuletide show that we did last week, believe it or not, if you drive down my street, you would notice that the subgenius house, the evil subgenius castle, is somehow the only one that has Christmas lights up. Uh, uh, Will, is that not so? Do you have a mic? Yes, there there's a mic. Yes, it is yeah. so. Way over there. It is it's so. true. It's sick. That's it doesn't true. make any sense. You know, you would think that, that, that considering that we're not uh, what Christians would call Christians or anything like that, why is it that all the... And it's not an economic thing. I mean, everybody no. on my block could afford Christmas lights. Why is it that the evil, blasphemous, nasty sub-geniuses have the, the uh, Christmas lights up on... on that street, that one street, which you don't need to know any more than that, really, dear friends. But, uh, oh well, this cassette will do. I'm going to be talking a lot on this show. 
doing a lot of a lot of yakking because uh, well, some uh, I hadn't planned to, but some things happened. We did have a nice Christmas. We we really did, um, especially my kids, and that's what Christmas is for. It's not for Christians. It's for kids. We had a real good, fun Christmas up until the deaths, dear friends, the deaths. Um, one human, one animal. Uh, some of you may know, at least by reputation, a filmmaker who used to live in Austin by the name of Brian Hansen. Uh, he's been in San Francisco for the last couple of years. and But you may still have seen his short film, Speed of Light, or some other ones. They've been shown here in town several times, including the Subgenius Convention in 1980, the first Subgenius Convention in Dallas. And uh, I didn't really know him that well, but I know that some of my listeners probably did know Brian. He's dead. Died last night. Um, he'd been staying in New York at, of all places, David Burns Loft. Uh, and he was working on his, his next film, which actually, by the way, was based on Dr. Howell Robbins, of all people. And about two weeks ago, he, uh, he got a headache. And the next day, Byrne came home and found Brian in a coma, comatose state, laying in the bed. They took him to the hospital, and uh, last night, Brian died of spinal meningitis, which is a disease that could happen to anybody, comes on real quick, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it unless you're in really well with J.R. Bob Dobbs. Um, but he was ready. He, Brian was ready. I, I mean, it's sad in a way. At least it, he didn't leave any, any children, and he was divorced. But... Uh, but he was a noble subgenius warrior, dear friends, and, and he made some great Bulldata movies and other things, and, and he even humbly lowered himself to do technical work on our San Francisco and L.A. subgenius revivals, which is a little bit like having Federico, Federico Fellini run lights uh, for um, the, the local Bozo TV show. Dr. Paul Mavridis of the Lies Foundation told me about uh, Brian's death, and he, he, he called me last night. He said, well, Brian crossed over last night. And he said, you know, you know, you know, Ivan, I'd, I'd hate to find myself looking down at my own body in some cheesy hospital, thinking to myself, oh, God, why'd they have to let him in to look at my body? Why did it have to end this way? And then, you know, off you go towards the great white light. But uh, Paul called me about that about uh, five hours ago. And about half an hour after that, my daughter's kitty cat got run over by a car right outside of our house. Honest to God, it's true. I was sitting upstairs and heard the screaming hit by a car was all I could hear. I, I was thinking, oh, thank God I can hear both of my own kids' voices. I just hope it was one of the other kids that I don't like. But uh, I, fortunately, it wasn't even that. It was merely our cat, Pud, or Pudding, her real name, laying there on the street, bleeding, dead, killed instantly. And uh, I, see, the, uh, I've had to Personally, I've had to plant so many deceased pets that I'm pretty much used to it. But my kids were old enough, six and eight, to know that death is permanent, you know. I mean, they know what it really means. They've had relatives cross over, shall we say. And uh, they cried and cried about it. And we had a long talk, and, and my little boy Idnax said, Dad, Dad, don't, don't bury pudding yet because, you know, cats have nine lives. And I said, well, Id, you know, that's, that's just a story. I'm, I was trying not to think about Stephen King's book, Pet Cemetery the whole time. I was going, no, they, they don't really have nine lives. He's not going to come back to life. And Idnak says, well, I know he'll have a happier life up there in heaven. I said, yeah, yeah, that's right, Idnak. In, in cat heaven, there are no cars. 
animals have a tough time of it now that humans run things. And uh, I went out and took Pud and stuck him in a tidy can and dug a big hole in the backyard so that the kids could put up a grave marker of their own making and, and think about it. Because my kids, believe it or not, friends, my kids have an unshakable belief in the hereafter. They don't believe in hell or the devil, and uh, the family isn't what most Christians would call Christians, like I say, but, you know, I'll be damned if I'm going to let my kids think that science has all the answers. Oh, that would be a horrible way. You know, total skepticism doesn't do you any good. If those little kids were to die, I'd want their little spirits, such as they are, to uh, head for the light, if there is one, and if it isn't really a sort of a bio-psychological Mack truck bearing down on you to put your own lights out for good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, this is going to be a New Year's show, believe it or not, and we'll pick it up out of this level of mortality. But, you know, let's face it, there's some people that are inspired by death Subgeniuses, of course. I mean, can have a field day with it if it if it isn't their own relatives or friends. Uh, but uh, you know, I've known three people myself, and this is true. I've known I've known three people who pretty much had died, but were brought back in some hospital after their hearts had been non-functional for like a couple of minutes. Now, all three of them said that they had that same experience that you hear about, right? Hovering over your own body, feeling just great everything natural and somehow you're free again and and then they sort of naturally gravitated off through the interdimensional tube leading to the shades of dead loved ones and a great light of love at the center uh, towards this tremendous love radiating light they're drawn uh, from their deathbeds now that you know the horrible thing is that may very well be just something that's programmed into our brains, dear friends, to fool us into thinking that everything's all right during what are actually our last moments, our darkest hour. <laughs> just a ruse, it could be, a red herring. <clears throat> but if, if those after-death visions are just a ruse, who was it that was so considerate as to program that into us? You know, it certainly isn't evolutionarily uh, expedient in any way. This hallucination programmed into all humans by Wotan, or Jehovah One, to be triggered at death strictly for propaganda value? Is that all it is? Is that all we're... But let me quote our guru, our high epoch of the church of the subgenius, J.R. Bob Dobbs, who said, quote, I staunchly believe in the afterlife, however, I'm not crazy. I know that I have no proof whatsoever of its existence. I choose to believe in an afterlife because it's too horrible to think that such a cool stud as myself could be allowed to disappear forever from the universe. And, uh, unquote, that was taken from Bob Dobbs' diary, written at the age of 15, dear friends. And most of the time, I too, I, I've taken Bob's, Bob's uh, uh, suggestion there, and I choose to believe in an afterlife, although I fully recognize that I'm deliberately doing so, just because the very idea of a universe without me is unthinkable. I mean, after all, what would y'all do without Reverend Stang to hate, huh? or to criticize, or whatever. And some say that, uh, some say that, that what you find out too late, just as you're nearing that white light, is that it really is just the headlights of a Mack truck bearing down on you at 90 miles an hour. And it's at the last second before that ultra-dimensional truck hits you that makes the gods laugh the hardest. That moment when you suddenly realize that you've been tricked and are about to be killed again. <laughs> but Bob tells us that ain't true, friends. Well, that's a common subgenius theory, but Bob don't believe it, because a true subgenius soul will go on to, to Asgard, or Valhalla, another word for it. Same place where Reverend Hansen, Reverend Brian Hansen, and my cat, Pud, are now. 
That old damn Bob, for instance. Old Bob, yeah, his whole body's stiff now. But yet he's coming, coming right now, even in death. And you can take that literally because death for a subgenius hero like Pud, my cat, or, or Reverend Hansen, uh, is, it's really just a transfer over to Asgard, the land of perpetual squirt and the portal to the eternal pleasure zone. And Bob is thus, you see, in a continuous moment of pure squirt moment. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What good's religion without an afterlife, you know? And why else would you need a religion? Well, we'll just... My old buddy God was a weird cat. He, he really was. He was into everything. He used to make universes. Um, Cranked out quite a number of them years ago, and supposedly he's still at it. Uh, I, I don't know if it was really uh, an infinite number of universes. I mean, you got to stop somewhere, but... Oh, God, he, he had this deal where you'd go from one universe to another every time you died. They'd start you off in the before life, which was sort of like a eternal paradise. Uh, to kind of get you off on the right foot, and then all of a sudden you'd lose your memory and get born here on Earth. And then uh, when you got old and died, you'd pass on to the etheric universe next door. And why, after you died there, you'd be born into the angelic universe. So once there, friend, you'd find out there were dozens and dozens of them, each, uh, each uh, one better than the last. In fact, each one incomprehensibly better than the last. And, as long as you didn't screw up too bad, you could keep on traveling up through the universes, getting ever closer to the, the bob head. The final moment has come. All the forces of Grayskull, all the powers of the universe will be vested in me. Me! And you will cease to exist. It is not too late to undo this madness. Madness. I demand destitution, shame, and loneliness of scorn. It is my destiny. It is my right. Nothing will deter me from it. Men who crave power look back over the mistakes of their lives, pile them all together, and call it destiny. Thank you for that bit of philosophy, sorceress. Here is my response. See, if you die bad, friend, or if you're a messed up person, you might leave behind a part of your soul, the lower soul, or what we call the mental eye, and that becomes a poltergeist, friend, or a wandering shade, an earthbound spirit doomed to roam the earth pathetically repeating its sad loop of behavior that made it split from the higher soul in the first place. Uh, can you imagine a ghost trying to buy a pack of cigarettes for eternity, friends? Witness this moment, he man. This moment when the powers of Grayskull will become mine for eternity. Our lifelong battle is ending at last in the only way it could. Holosphere is standing by. Hi, girls. <laughs> Praise Buck. Important to tell the folks out there that we're all actually here and operating now. Those were just simulacra of us that were on before. Etheric doubles made out of the black ether by green energy archon. Created by the simrac... I can't even say it. Simlacrimal bands. What is fact and what is apparition? In an English garden, a ghostly maiden appears to be trying to recapture some lost time of her past life. They're here. The determination as to whether your home is haunted is, is not very easy. I, what I meant to say was it might very well be a poltergeist intrusion instead of a classic haunting. There's a difference. Poltergeist are usually associated with an individual. Hauntings seem to be connected 
with an area. A house, usually. Poltergeist disturbances of fairly short duration. Perhaps a couple of months. Hauntings can go on for years. This is the ghost of a young man who has been starved to death in a cage. And what do you see out in the vast realm of the night? Yeah, what do you see, dear friends? By the way, this is still the hour of slack. Oh, thanks. This is still the hour of slack on uh, KNON 90.9 FM. Dear friends, you can call uh, for information on just what we're getting at here uh, at 823-7490 and speak to the mighty Willa Dobbs, who is uh, well prepared to explain in two seconds or less just exactly what Bob Dobbs and the Church of the Subgenius is all about. But you know, there is a hell, there is a, a hell, and you are in it right now, dear friends. Uh, as Bob said, quote, I walked into hell the minute I stepped out of my maw. I'm paraphrasing there. And of course, uh, this is only the top floor of hell. The hell where you don't even know you're in hell yet. Oh, yeah. The, this reality, dear friends, actually is what you know as the before life. You have yet to even graduate to earth, much less heaven. And you may just keep going down unless you get Bob back into your life. Yes, Earth is hell, and you have been sentenced here as punishment for being human in general. Now, much of the problem that people have uh, stems from the fact that they uh, think life and death are, only, are the only two states of being. And actually, they're very small straws in a very large, large haystack. Finding the needle, friends, is the tough part. This haystack of death lives isn't uh, an infinite one, though, really. I mean, it's a, there is a judgment day, and there's a splice in time uh, that both serve as both the beginning and end of a big repeating loop of all cause and effect. There are enough, however, enough afterlives that you will sooner or later get the afterlife that you really want. That's why so many preachers can't quit talking about hell, because they secretly know that they deserve hell. Bob once spoke of this while driving past the slag heaps of Midlothian, Texas, where the conspiracy melts down the fossilized bones of old cars to make into new ones, uh, thence themselves to die and be smelted down again. Now, Bob said that this is exactly how we endlessly experience the eternal conveyor belt of karma, the great wheelbarrow of humiliation that we call existence in this modern day. As Bob said, in my father's midway are many bumper car rides. He said that in uh, trans Transmission 47. Uh, now, the before life for subgeniuses is like a, a, a huge carnival. You'll end up on a lot of different rides for fleeting eternities. Uh, one might be uh, the roller coaster of alternating fear and joy, and the next might be the tunnel of love. Hell uh, is what you call the ultimate spook house, the haunted Lavin Manor of the afterlives. And beyond all these lives and alternate universes, the whole of creation itself is actually a vast uh, uh, plate you might say, balanced on the back of a huge cosmic elephant who in turn is standing on top of a, a gigantic tortoise. And underneath the tortoise is a cosmic horn toad and beneath it, an all-encompassing fiddler crab. And as far as we know yet, it stops at the fiddler crab. Nothing, nothing itself does not even exist beyond that cosmic fiddler crab, dear friends. You hit that brick wall and there's nothing past that. But what happens when you die, huh? Oh, I know that's what you want to know. What happens when you die? Well, upon death, 
ye will be faced with a multiple choice question, basically. A, you can walk the earth as a mournful, lonely, uptight ghost. Or B, you can immediately reincarnate and start from scratch all over again. Or C, you can go to the absolute worst part of hell and start working your way up through the ranks till you finally make it to the topmost floor of heaven where they will tell you the punchline. Now, Bob Dobbs chose C, the latter, even though most people choose B because it seems easier. However, dear friends, when you reincarnate, you aren't... You, I mean, re, people get the wrong idea about reincarnation. You aren't going to be the same person you were before. You'll be mixed with parts of others who had entirely different lives. Each, uh, quote, you, unquote, is reincarnated from several different people and later into several different people. It's like multiple strands of string that temporarily come together to form one solid rope for a while before unraveling and, and each strand goes off to be part of various different ropes. It's only come judgment day, dear friends, that all the original strands of the, uh, the real you, so to speak, come back together once and for all. And nobody, you know, if if people knew this, nobody would be dumb enough to commit suicide. It would be fruitless, for one thing, because at no point in this chain are you actually dead, uh, where nothing happens and you don't exist. <laughs> and nobody's that lucky, dear friends. Nobody gets it that out that easy. You leave this plane, buddy, and you're just going to enter Wotan's bloodstream, and when you do that, you still have to deal with his antibodies. <laughs> what does the night hold for you? What monstrous vision might be awaiting beyond life, beyond the grave, beyond the realm of death? She went through my soul. <laughs> when I'm fascinated by death itself, what happens as we die, when we die, what happens after we die? Do you mean life after death? Yes. Is that? Yes, I think there is. If I am correct, the life force is conserved always and in all things, even after death. And you think that applies to what's happened here tonight? Yes. Yes, I do. I think that girl, creature, drained energy, life force partially from Bukowski and totally from the guard. That girl was no girl. She's totally alien to this planet and our life form. And totally dangerous. Yeah. There is no Must have been someone else. Thing called death. It's just a transformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy George Romali. This concludes. Of the very door of the day of the wrath of God is at hand. Yeah, the and if you plan to get saved, you would better do it now. There will be a... we got to drop this name in here, Bob Dobbs. Yeah, I'll wait and follow you, folks. Remember, behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him in space. Do you hear? And the Omega, death and rebirth, and as you die, so will I be reborn. <laughs> Human relationships are just so dope today. It's not too deep and darkness stands in our way. How about the light? I'm finished with the night. The night. Tonight's Iron Slack is sponsored by the Athenor Bookstore. Athenor Bookstore, dear friends. The only place where you can find certain videotapes that have been referred to here and there on this show. But what about heaven, 
you want to know what, 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 what about a heaven you're thinking oh well i'm gonna go to heaven i'm sure i'm i don't believe uh that i've even if i've been a sinner god ain't so mean as to invent a hell only a preacher a human preacher would be nasty minded enough uh, would be frustrated and hateful and and uh oh uh, 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 enough of a supremacist, a moral supremacist to believe in hell. Because they get you all mixed up between heaven and hell, dear friends. In fact, by the time you get to the Christian heaven, you'll be wishing to God that you'd made it to subgenius hell, which is, which is actually the, the heaven that you're looking for anyway, believe me. In the subgenius hell slash heaven, you might say there is no authority it's like one huge uh, opium den full of the coolest folks you ever met in your life and many of these are angels angels don't have to sin my friend but they do anyway just like you sometimes they have sex with subgenius souls other times they just watch us with no more involvement than uh, than uh, that with which we watch a, a soap opera. They laugh at us indeed, but they, they love us, it's nevertheless. Uh, telepathy is used in heaven because there's no air there. It's like outer space. Indeed, everything in heaven is composed of varying thicknesses and degrees of pure pleasure. In this respect, heaven then is like a, a boot camp, a booty camp, you might say, training for the even more eye-watering peace and ecstasy, the orgasmicism to come. Now, dead children, whenever a kid dies, a little kid dies, they go straight to heaven and grow up there. And they make the best angels, really, because they require almost no deprogramming compared to, oh, say, a preacher or a judge or a sacred scribe. But that's no reason to gear your life to the afterlife. I mean, you aren't dead yet, uh, dear listeners. The so-called real world, after all, is still uh, the real world. And uh, sure, it's all a bunch of uh, Maya. It's all illusion, uh, a veil of uh, blah, blah. But, and you make your own reality and all that. But just try to remember that the next time you stub your toe, smart boy. If you don't believe it, try this simple experiment. Insert a hot needle very slowly into your left eyeball, and suddenly, I guarantee you'll gain an understanding of the value of a dollar, and will be rid of the corny, cosmic, sweetness and light illusions of the New Age and Christian fools forever. I mean, God almighty, friends, money has more to do with reality than all of mankind's religions put together. So remember the next time your uh, higher self uh, uh, is up there, the more time it spends grokking the all in cosmic uh, onenessness, the longer your mirror shell is left alone on Earth to act like a jerk and hide its head in the sand while the conspiracy continues to get away with murder. Real murder, dear friends. And the, in other words, what I'm saying, I guess, is that the best way to get to heaven is to get slack now. And if, uh, if you want to look in uh, the book of the Subgenius, you can get more information on that. Or see the chapter uh, of, about holistic pinks in Bob Dobbs book, The Treasury of B.S. Oh, yes, dear friends. Oh, I love you. Destiny to receive the powers of Grace 
This inevitable moment will transpire before your eyes, even as He-Man himself bears witness to it. The universe. Yes! Our religions have to fight with one another. Because we have the same father and mother. We should be able to strange. So we have to be the change. Dear friends, that background music there is by Dr. Philo Drummond and Reverend Ivan Stang, Doctors for Wotan, breaking apart and falling into tiny pieces, even as you listen. There it went, see? But let's turn away from these morbid thoughts about death and look to the future, because the next hour of Slack is going to take place in 1988. And I, I can hardly believe myself that I've even made it this far. I, 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 I almost think the tobacco demons must be protecting me, making me seem healthy so that the innocent people out there will think, well, see, cigarettes don't kill everybody. Reverend Stang's still alive. Beware those tobacco demons, my friends. They have tentacles and tendrils. The trickiest of all, the trickiest. And the conspiracy works for the tobacco demons, too, you know. But anyway, it's, it's a new year, or will be pretty quick. And according to the subgenius calendar, 1988 is called 10BX, meaning 10 years before X day. 1998, July 5th, when the men from Planet X will come down and round up the pinks and torture them and send the rest of us off to the meat packing, I mean the uh, sex vessels of the love goddesses, and uh, all like Bob says there, and uh, uh, if that is, if Bob is there to greet them, and if he ain't it, if it's some conspiracy dupe or rogue subgenius like Reagan, and even if it's you, they'll put this planet out of its misery, just like you would a dog that you found by the side of the road. But, you know, let's just be cheery and uh, look at some predictions for 1988. These are uh, predictions are from the book of the subgenius, printed in 1982, by the way. Philo, you got it together there, man? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 1988, according to the book of the subgenius, will bring us another brief nuke and germ war with Russia, plus a short nuke war with China and Japan. Another brief nuke war. I guess there's already been one, but they probably buried it, covered it up, or they will. Um, and Paris, Paris, France, will be bombed by the Trinidad Air Force. All of the oil will run out, and artificial food will increasingly be used to stave off food rioting. You can almost smell it coming right now. There will be a lobotomy fad among the wealthier, wealthier teenagers, which will, of course, spread to the lower classes via amateur lobotomies performed by a sinister bozo cult. Now, Bob uh, uses a lot of... Uh, Oh, ambiguous statements, uh, much like Nostradamus did. He, you know, he leaves it open to interpretation. But I think if you'll watch the newspapers in the coming year, you'll see these things coming. It says here, the slack party spreads. I guess that's a shortened version of the anarcho-materialist party. Uh, with over three million zombies for Bob in two months. Here's a showbiz prediction. A man with large breasts on his back will become a major TV star. Why not? Um, Bob will secretly incorporate the Masons, the Rosicrucians, and other mystic fellowships for businessmen into the church. Dobbs Corporation secretly will run energy industries through interlocking directorates. 
later on in the year we find civilization literally falling apart. Not hard to believe at all, I don't think. The Church of the Subgenius resurfaces as horror predictions are fulfilled, it says. Now that's uh, interesting. And Bob's weird powers, publicly demonstrated, uh, will cause UFO contacts to be revealed. And at that time, diehard subgeniuses, such as yourself, myself, I hope it's you, and uh, the Willa Dobbs here, will be showered by tribulation money dropped from those UFOs. Millions will suddenly try to rejoin the church. And at the same time, a third sex will be added to the human race, the sex of the biomorphs. And as nature becomes increasingly chaotic, America will make a last-ditch attempt to return to the old ways. American Indians will be in great demand as consultants to science, industry, government. And there will be a resurgence, dear friend, of superstition, uh, quote, black magic, unquote, something that will prompt all the experts to warn of an impending dark age. Well, every new age, Fool says pretty much the same things, and most of them probably read it in the book of the subgenius, available at better bookstores. <sighs> but uh, well, why don't we look at some predictions for? Um, well, let's see what the book of the subgenius said about about 1987. Let's just see how accurate Bob is uh, from prediction to prediction. Uh, See, chapter 12 here, 1987. Uh, this is what uh, Bob said would happen in 87. Another year of bad famine. Yeah, that's true. Deliberate genetic manipulation of flora and fauna in an attempt to offset the rampant mutation of wildlife due to the increasing levels of radiation in the food chain. Well, we've, uh, they haven't announced it, but we know that that's going on. Uh, Church, the Subgenius Foundation will release truth about the so-called ancient astronauts and medical proof of the work instinct. And we did, and nobody listened. So, that's not our fault. And he, okay, here's one, and we... Texas secedes. A bloody war against the Union. Eight-year-old Subgenius becomes president of Texas. Friends, you got about four days to make that come true, my fellow Texans. And I wish you would. I truly wish you would. I wish this state would separate from the so-called United States. We've got all we need to live on our own. We don't have to work under those fools in Washington. The germ wars in South America fail to slow the insane population explosion there, it says. And that's uh, true. They called it... Uh, uh, local rebellions, but it was germ war experiments. Uh, let's, what else? A crime wave will be unaffected by nationally televised beheadings, and that's true. You didn't even pay any attention to the nationally televised beheadings, did you? They advertised them, but you didn't even watch. You didn't listen, huh? You went uncommitting your crimes. Bob, it says here, secretly acquires cancer cure and intelligence serums and converts Pat Boone, Anita Bryant, and Alexander Haig. Well, those are those speak for themselves. That's obviously true. We we uh, if you read the right newspapers, not here in Dallas, but other newspapers, you'd know that was true. A giant prehistoric newt was shot and killed in Loch Ness with no apparent survivors. Well, of course they weren't going to tell you about that. You know, the last of an endangered species of plesiosaurs. Uh, Subgenius literature will be banned and distributed clandestinely. Desperate persons pay fortunes, even kill, to learn where they can receive subgenius brain treatments. Well, I can't talk about that. Uh, Yeti tribe. Oh, okay, here's one. In 80, this, these are, again, uh, predictions for 1987, the year behind, by Bob. He says here that a Yeti tribe would be discovered, a tribe of uh, Bigfoot, in other words, and accidentally massacred by anthropologists in Tibet. Now that happened and was suppressed, but made into a movie called Harry and the Hendersons and kind of pinked up a bit. It's not a bad movie though, really. Um, and then here, a popular anti-family movement disguised as a pro-family movement will attract extremists from all sides, which also starts an anti-subgenius witch hunt, which uh, Will, I think you can uh, agree, has certainly uh, had been happening 
which, by the way, at the same time will spur Book of the Subgenius reprint sales. Praise Bob, it's true. Famine, economic chaos will spur unbelievable moral decay in Western civilization. Murder clubs, rape societies will blossom among the super rich. Okay, we see that in Highland Park, in North Dallas, Addison right now. Uh, suicide becomes a respectable competition sport and is televised. Well, friends, what more can I say? Obviously, the word of Bob rings true once again. Huh. This is a revelation of the power of the subgenius. Subgenius spiritual mastery is not maintained without struggle. The subgenius must be vigilant and must hone his abnormality. He must tithe the church. Otherwise, the intestence loses its spark and then subgenius degenerates and dies normal. This is a death worse than any fate. When a normal dies, it exhausts all of its puny strength in a vain effort to hover near the body it squandered. The pale, shell-like entity soon is carried away by wind or other forces. Being lighter than air, the pink, although they may be bland versions of other colors, the pink soul drifts aimlessly. Although pinkster souls, also known as plugs, do tend to cluster. The plugs are gathered up by cosmic agents, usually representing Jehovah One, who has the largest franchise in this area. The plugs are sprinkled into vats. The vats have an energy source which melts the plug shells, making them bond together. As new plugs continue to collect above, the norm soul's shapes and colors blend until they resemble a lumpy stew. Ultimately, the plugs form a clear slurry which drains from the back. This plasma can be used to form new souls. Souls who have a chance to become new subgenia. However, the plasma is also formed during sex, and the slur plus is often sold as a spaceship fuel additive. Well, oh, that was uh, Pastor Bucknecked, dear friends. The mighty Bucknecked with his lecture, part of his lecture on uh, uh, facts about the before life. Now, let's continue with these predictions. Not for 1987. I'm going to read you the predictions for 19... I mean, <clears throat> let me start that again, along with the music here. Uh, I'm going to read you predictions for last year that were released in January 1987 in the National Enquirer, okay? This is what the Enquirer said would be happening during the last year that has just passed. Uh, it says here, um, a Michael Jackson will shock fans by becoming a fire and brimstone TV evangelist. And here's a good one. It'll be a great year for America as our economy takes a dramatic upswing. Boy, man, these National Enquirer psychics are so good. You know, I, I never would have thought that that stock market crash would have been like an upswing. Um, uh, Burt Reynolds and Wheel of Fortune hostess Vanna White will fall head over heels in love after meeting on a TV talk show. Uh, Joan Collins will save the life of rival Linda Evans when a raging fire destroys part of the Carrington Mansion on the Dynasty set. Collins will actually carry Linda through the flames to safety after she's trapped in a burning room. And, you know, I never heard about any of this stuff on the news. 
Construction will begin on a massive pipeline to bring water from the Great Lakes to the southern states after scientists predict dread deadly droughts will afflict the south. You know, I don't want to drink the water from Lake Michigan. Nay, I think not. Uh, have you ever seen Lake Michigan? Mean, you can't even see it. Uh, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev will be seriously wounded in an assassination attempt by one of his own soldiers, and it will leave a scar on his head, forming a map of Italy. Um, let's see, uh, what else have we got here? The mayor of one of America's largest cities will undergo a sex change operation, then she'll seek re-election as a woman and win! Well, that happened right here in Dallas. Uh, and look at this one, quote, Ivan Stang will be saying these very words on the radio on December 27th at 9.50 uh, p.m., unquote. Now that's accurate, I, I must say, I, how'd they do it? This is my favorite one, okay? The scientific world will be stunned when the frozen carcass of a dinosaur is found in an Alaskan glacier. Now that's what, and I, I, I'll bet you anything, that's a Redosaurus. Uh, beast from 20,000 Fathoms, friends, you saw it. That's a Redosaurus, and I can't wait. They've only got a few more days for most of these to come true. A massive White House investigation into UFOs will be launched after an entire fleet is sighted by thousands of fans at an open-air rock concert in Northern California. Well, of course that happened, but they didn't even mention the harmonic convergence. And uh, let's see, Joan Collins will be a Egyptian princess. Prince Charles will bend spoons using the power of his mind. Uh, and America will launch a massive military attack on Iran, killing the Ayatollah. Well, you know, frankly, obviously, I think we can see that Bob's predictions are so much better than those of uh, the best that National Enquirer were able to get together. Dig it, baby. So, uh, yeah, who? More from... More... F Come on. I thought I had that one already. Here's this little cartridge. A1 AIDS condom PSA. Get ready, dear friends. We're going to run the AIDS condom PSA. A condom. There. A condom should be used during sexual relations from start to finish with anyone who you are not absolutely sure is free of the AIDS virus. Brought to you as a public service by the American Foundation for AIDS Research. AIDS. It's everybody's problem. Not my problem, friends. <sighs> I hope. Not yet. But, uh, golly. That should have played. You know, what they were saying is you need to wrap yourself up in cellophane and uh, take it easy, you know, because uh, there are these viruses going around. And that ain't the only one that the Defense Department created. <laughs> At least that's what they say. That's what a lot of kook friends of mine say, is that the AIDS virus was invented by the Defense Department. I don't believe it. I think it came from green monkeys from Mars, like the, like, uh, the government says. I believe but everything the government says. Normals cannot be said to have led past lives. It was just normal. I'm Pastor Buck Naked. You can write to me at post office box 140026, Dallas, Texas, 75214. <laughs> Now, can 
One of those patterns right now from Yukon Jack. Yes, dear friends, when we start up the next show, it's going to be 10BX, the year 10BX, but we'll still be here, and you'll still be here. My cat won't be here, and Brian Hansen won't be here, and none of our dads will be here, probably. Mine will, I hope, but uh, and a lot of us probably won't be here. Another year, as old father time drags his wounded, bruised body out of the 87s and on, and he quits his job, dear friends. He quits his job and slacks off, and some poor new kid has to come along and take over with a new fashion, but that's all it is, just different change of fashion. And these are harsh statements, dear friends, and they may not go down well on the polished sensibilities of the rationalist of the modernists, but what Bob's trying to get you to do is invest wisely in that greatest of commodities, the most potentially profitable aspect of your entire being, your eternal soul gland, that gland in your foot that's powered by all of nature. You probably didn't even know that soul was a gland. Well, that's what this is all about, and uh, Robert Wisdom's going to be on in just about uh, two minutes to tell you more by example with the American Music Party. So, uh, Happy New Year. Like I say, I had a good Christmas, except for all the deaths. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I got, a, I got a, a vinyl tie, a necktie that looks like a dead fish from someone else, my beloved little wife. That was my favorite present. And lots of coffee. You better believe old Reverend Stang needs a lot of coffee to be able to yak like this. So, and, Goodbye till next year. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You need to write 823. No, what am I saying? Friends, if you need if you need information on Church of the Subgene, I'm sure there's some new listeners out there. If you want more information about what's going on, this is a club, so to speak, a disorganized religion. You can join it. <laughs> You can if you want, and you can even uh, get all kinds of magazines and so forth. But you can write for information from P.O. Box 140306 in Dallas, Texas, 75214. Uh, thank you all. I'm all just a to go. Thank you.